Welcome to lecture number 4. In this lecture we will take a closer look at the marker area, so everything that's inside our dashboard. But first let's think about what elements are actually in our dashboard. First of all there is a plane which serves as a background. We will create it using the A plane element. But why do we use this background? It gives a little bit of contrast between what we see through the camera of reality and the things we want to put in our dashboard. So for example imagine that you're looking at a white wall then our white icons will not be very visible and that's where the plane as background kicks in because it gives a little bit of contrast so you actually can see our icons. Further there's a title and we're going to use the A text element for that and of course our icons we're going to use the A image element for that and then there are our bars. And the bars are created with our own component, so using the A entity element. The component will be called bar values and it controls the height but also the color of our bars and also the color of those numbers. So the plane element is nested in our marker and here we see all the attributes. So the position is x, y and z. So 0, 0 in the middle and the Z value is negative, so it's pushed a little bit backwards. It's a background, isn't it? The X rotation is minus 90 degrees because it has to stand up and not lay down. And then the dimensions, it's 2 by 2. Now the color is black, but because of the transparency and the opacity, which is rather low, it will be yes, yeah, sort of gray. Now nested inside the plane are all the other elements of the dashboard. But before we take a look there, there's an alternative manner in which we can describe the transparency and the opacity. They are all properties of the material. So we could also have used the attribute material, which is then equal to a stringified object that contains now all the specifications, all the properties of a material, like transparent set to true in a key value pair and the opacity set to 0.3 in a key value pair. What syntax you're going to use is up to you. I've chosen for the, let's say, straightforward approach above. Nested inside the plane, we'll see the title. So the a-text element is used and it has its attributes like position and also color. So this is the text color and it's this nice pink color. But what's interesting in this example is that I've chosen one of the fonts that's available from the content delivery network of A-Frame. Of course you can also choose other fonts, but I think this is a nice example of using online fonts. And the value attribute is the text that's actually shown in our dashboard. Before we go to the images themselves, let's discuss the grid in which they are placed in the dashboard. Most important for the grid is how the X value goes into steps of 0.5. Now this image shows what the positive directions are for X, Y and Z. So with your thumb to the right is the positive X direction. And this means that our images and later on also our bars are set in the X direction from left to right in steps of 0.5. The steps cover a range from minus 0.75 up to positive 0.75. The y direction is maybe not what you expected, but you have to remember that objects in the 3D world and also images are located on their central point, on their middle, on their, let's say, local origin. And this is in the middle. So the temperature icon is not a square but a rectangle and has to be placed a little bit higher than the other images. And that's why the Y value is a little bit higher for the temperature icon and the rest is equal because they are more or less equally square. Now the Z value is positive, positive 0.2. The most important fact is that it's in front of our background which is negative 0.5. And the rest is all about the dimensions. So the ratio between the actual pixel size and how it is displayed in our dashboard. This is how it looks in code. The only thing I didn't mention so far is that we use now the reference to what we preloaded in our a-asset as images. So the hashtag temperature refers to the image that we have preloaded already in the beginning. And position comes out of our grid and the height and width create the dimensions we have calculated. And this also applies to soil 
air and light. This is the way how we put our four images in the grid into our dashboard. The last thing we want to add nested inside the plane is our own entity components. It uses the start and end tag a dash entity and it's given an ID of bar area. Now you would expect that also the components name, which is bar dash values, would also be included in the begin tag, but it isn't. The reason for this is a little bit odd. Because we are programming JavaScript in modules, we need to add this name of the component later. There's no real good explanation for this, but this is just the way it works. This ends up our complete index.html file, which is now ready to use. So the next lecture we'll take a look at the marker.